Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing another geometric wall art video. So what I've got here is a two by four piece of pressed um, pre-finished board. Um, I found this at Menards. Um, you could find something similar at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, but I just found this one at Menards. That's normally where I go. It was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like maybe $8, something like that. The first thing I do when I make one of these is find the center points on the board. So basically I just use a straight edge to find the center marks um, on both the long side and the short side of the board. So I have lines to go off of. And then I change the angle on my miter box saw to a 45 degree angle and I leave it at one side and I do not change it at all during the entire project. I leave it at this 45 degree angle on this side of the saw for the whole project. Once I have my center points marked and then I also have my miter box saw set up, it's time to start looking at wood. I just use some old basic like garden laths that we had in our barn from when we moved here. Um, very inexpensive. You could use a variety of different things. You could rip down pallets. You could rip down old lumber that you have. Any and all of the things that you have for old wood will completely work. So as you're making your design for this project, um, you're cutting all the pieces at 45 degree angles and then lining them up roughly on the board how you want the pattern to be. Uh, you can follow an X pattern, you can just follow the long side of the board, you can follow the short side of the board, you can, you can make pretty much whatever you want with straight lines. Um, and even from there you can add dimension um, and different lengths and different uh, stain colors and stuff like that just to add some more like visual interest. But as you see me here, um, I'm starting in the very center of the board with that first piece. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm laying it kind of carefully there for right now, but really what I'm doing is just doing a rough layout of um, how the piece is going to look. And then I take a pencil and mark where I can cut the excess off and then use that leftover piece um, on another part of the board. These projects are very simple. Really all you do is just keep cutting that 45 degree angle with all of your pieces um, and just keep adding them to the board until it's completely full. As I'm laying the pieces, I'm kind of keeping in mind how I want the piece to look and kind of the aesthetic that I'm looking for. So what I want is a really rustic ranchy piece because these are actually going to go in our bedroom. Um, so I have some more smooth pieces of board and then I have some more rough pieces of board and then I have some um, leftover like cedar uh, planks for fencing that I actually end up cutting down for some extra thickness, um, both in height and in width, uh, to add just a little bit more interest to the board. And that's kind of just one of those nice things about this project is you can make it however you want, however you see fit. Once I have all the pieces laid out roughly in the pattern that I want, I can go ahead and get started staining. I use the Minwax uh, Wood Finish Penetrating Stain in Special Walnut, as well as the Varathane Wood Stain in Briar Smoke. And then to apply the stain, all I use is an old um, sock or an old pair of socks that have holes in them that we no longer use. And then you really just stain to your little heart's desire. I usually start with one color and then do quite a few pieces just to see how it looks and then add in other colors um, as I go. So I'm starting with the Minwax uh, Special Walnut right now and then 
I'll go ahead and start adding some of that briar smoke in after I have a few pieces done just to create the look that I want, the pattern that I want, so it doesn't look too matchy-matchy because that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. I'm looking for good um, contrast and um, differentiation between the pieces to make it just visually interesting. I will say when I apply the stain, I do not go in with a heavy hand. Usually what I try to do is get my um, sock kind of, um, I don't even know if saturated is the word. I, I get a little bit of stain on my sock and then I kind of like mix it around on the sock because I like to build upon the color. Uh, the wood that I use has a lot of grain in it and I like to uh, make sure that is shown in, in the stain that I put on. Then once I have everything stained, we can start putting the pieces on the board. So what we do is we put a straight edge um, against the long end and then I can put the pieces perfectly in place. What we do is we glue them and also brad nail them in place. This is not as difficult as it looks. And don't forget we mark the center point on the board so we can line the boards up perfectly to go up the center of the board and make sure that our lines are straight. Once all the pieces are secure, we use a combination of our table saw as well as our circle saw to go ahead and cut the rough edges off. Um, the table saw worked really well for one edge and then what we did with the circle saw is we clamped down another straight edge so we could run the circle saw right along that edge. Uh, you don't need any fancy equipment for that. We literally just used the same level that we did for the straight edge on the board when we were putting the pieces in place just to get all of those rough overhanging edges off. Once all the edges were smooth, I wanted to put a frame on it. So I had some old cedar uh, fence boards left um, that were unstained. So what we did is we took our table saw and cut them into one inch strips. From there, I was able to stain and secure the frame into place. And that's it, that's the finished project. I have a beautiful rustic western themed uh, geometric wall art to put in our bedroom now. I absolutely love it. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video and maybe can take something from this to make a project of your own. And until next time from Rock Hard Ranch, make sure you do your chores, count your blessings, and love your dog.